Greetings, friends. It's Pat at Dancing Moon Travel. Thank you for joining us again this evening. Uh, and, and before I forget, if you uh, didn't catch the live broadcast and are joining us uh, on a replay, we welcome you too. We're glad that you tuned in to pick up this ver uh, great session of Let's Talk Travel. Uh, we're focusing all month long in December on the exciting topic of adventure travel. And, and uh, we have this week with us, Lori Scheller. Uh, she is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing with Swan Hellenic. And uh, Lori, before we just kind of dig in, uh, I'd like to just play this real quick video uh, that, that I think our audience will love just a little overview right. of what to expect with Swan Hellenic. Now, Lori, if that doesn't want to make people go home and pack their bags, I don't know whatever would. Uh, and, and I'm especially interested in chatting with you this evening because um, you're a new partner for us here at Dancing yeah. News Travel. And and I was I visited your booth. At, you know, I love going to Cruise World because I always find fabulous new partners that we want to work with. Uh, and and uh, before before we get on to too much about Swan Hellenic, can, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how do you got it? How you got into travel and <laughs> make your way to where you are today? Yeah, sure, Pat. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate um, you having me on the show, and I'm happy to be a partner now with you. Um, and it's it's a very exciting time here at Swan Hellenic. So I actually am originally from the Philadelphia area. And about 25 years ago, I moved to Florida, to the Fort Lauderdale area. And I kind of said, hey, I want to get involved in the cruise industry, you know, since we're in the cruise capital of the world. And I've always enjoyed travel. Um, so I started actually as on the agency side and worked 17 years really selling to, you know, consumers, putting packages together. Most of them were based on cruises. So I've worked with all of the various cruise lines in North America, um, you know, from, from mass market to, you know, your carnival to the luxury market. And then about uh, four years ago, I used to sit on one of the cruise line advisory boards and I was recruited to go uh, run the sales organization for MSC Cruises, which is uh, a European based cruise line that was grown here in North America. Uh, which kind of gave me the other perspective from being the travel agent to, you know, then being on the cruise line side, which I really learned a lot. Um, and then come, uh, what was it, 2020 and COVID and we had downsizing and, uh, you know, that, you know, so I was no longer with MSC and I had some time off, which was the first time in a long time. And I really said, you know, what, what do I really like? What And this opportunity came about and I will give you, you know, later on in the history of Swan Hellenic, but I thought it was such a unique opportunity for me to to be part of, you know, this startup really from the ground. And I really just started work for the company in August of this year. So I'm fairly new as well. Okay. But you know, this industry from the inside yeah. out, you've done what yes. I do. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, then yes, you yes. <laughs> The other side of the equation and work for MSC, which is a, a great, I, I, I love them. We we sell MSC and, and uh, enthusiastically. Uh, you mentioned the history of Swan Hellenic. What, what, can you share that with us? Sure. I mean, it's um, the Swan Hellenic, the, the name actually it was a family. It was a Swan family based in the UK. And it actually started in uh, the 50s. And 
what they catered to, they were really the pioneer in cultural expedition cruises. So back in the 50s, they were really the only commercial passenger vessel that went to places like Greece and Turkey and really at that time, um, you know, it was really off the beaten path and it was for, you know, uh, people in academia, archaeologists, things like that, to really go study the antiquities of that area, hence the name Hellenic. But uh, through the years, they were purchased at one point by P&O, Swan Hellenic Granite, and then uh, it went through a couple more different variations. And then in 2017, basically, the, the company went out of business. And when the ships were being built, you know, the, the idea was really to follow that same tradition. So it's really like the rebirth of Swan Hellenic. So we want to be the leaders in cultural expedition cruises. So our ships are brand new. Uh, the first one actually is sailing right now, making our way to Antarctica. But our sailings are brand new, but we just want to keep you know that heritage and, and that same brand, Swan Hellenic. So you guys really occupy a very specialized niche in the, in the travel industry, a, a blend of cultural exploration and adventure. And, and uh, what about destinations? You mentioned Antarctica. That's definitely off the beaten path. What are sure. some other destinations where you can go? Well, as you saw in the video, um, you know, our, our tagline is see what others don't. And the size of our ships allows that to happen and also because it is a polar class ship you know where we can get through a certain amount it's a pc5 ship where we can you know get through ice um so our destinations we actually visit seven continents and right now we have the one ship out we have another one coming next year and then another one coming at, at the very end of next year early 2023 but when those three ships are out we will be you know transversing the entire world and we have itineraries today that do uh, South America. They go up the coast, the west coast of South America, all the way up to Alaska. Uh, we have Antarctica, of course. We have the Arctic. We have very unique, very, I mean, I don't know many other people that have this itinerary. That's called the Russian Far East. And what you can do is actually sail from Nome, Alaska, and you go down to the, through the, um, you see the Aleutian Islands. So, you know, when you're in Alaska, you're super close to Russia. And then you go to Wrangell Island and very few ships, like I said, do this. And this is like where the largest polar bear denning in the world is, um, you know, bird species that, you know, only can be found there. The whales, uh, walrus, or um, yeah, I think it's the walrus is up there. So it's really someone for, you know, for people who are really into, like I said, it's a cultural expedition, whether it's, you know, wildlife or, you know, some of these small towns that we go in, in South America, you know, you really get to, you know, go into the villages and learn about the people. And that's what's so unique about our itineraries. It's not only the destination, but it's also that the product that we offer because everything, we have lectures that are, uh, you know, very versed in that area. So, you know, the lecture that we have on South America is not going to be the same one that we have when we're more in Africa. Um, you know, they're very versed in that specific area. And then we also include, you know, on every single port, whether we're in Antarctica and doing landings on Zodiac, um, every port we have, you know, a shore excursion included. And it's I not, you know, that. it's not just an it's not just you know it's in depth it's cultural and then we also offer for people who you know it really depends like if if people aren't into you know we'll offer different levels as far as you know kind of like a mild medium you know adventurous short excursion depending on the audience so um you know you never have to worry about like it's adventurous but it's not you know like everyone has to go rock climbing that day, you know? <laughs> right. So, so there, there really is something for, for all levels of fitness and ages and stages. Absolutely. I, I Absolutely. love that. I mean, there is, you know, we, we do say like for Antarctica, I mean, we do have, you know, kind of health guidelines because you do have to get on and off the Zodiac. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but that's really <laughs> what it's all about. Yeah. And, you know, also because some of these destinations are pretty remote. Uh, so, yeah. 
but it is something for everyone. So, so uh, what about the onboard experience on, on your vessels? What, what kind of accommodations and, and uh, yeah. how many passengers are typically on board? So, I mean, this is the incredible, I, I think this is, uh, you know, something that, you know, we had talked about. The ship is very intimate and the maximum, the capacity on our sh first two ships coming out is 152 passengers. So 76 cabins, 152 passengers, and then we have 120 crew members. So it's really, you know, almost that one-to-one -one service. Wow. And also on board is going to be our 12-person uh, uh, expedition team. And so these are the people who are really experts, like for in Antarctica, for example, and will be taking small groups, you know, out for landings and, uh, you know, be able to be very versed in that area. Getting people with, so, with their feet so, um, on the ground there. Yeah. yeah. But so our ship is five star. It's absolutely spectacular. I mean, like I said, we just had her, as you can see, like this is a balcony. We call it a balcony stateroom, but other cruise lines call the size of this a balcony suite. It's about 300 square feet. Uh, what's really nice is the cat every cabin on the ship actually has a fire feature on it uh so it's like a, a gas fireplace that's so nice wow and it's really it's five star but we we tend to use the you know stay away from the word luxury because this is an adventure this is i mean it has all the amenities that you could say for luxury as far as you know the quality of the food the linen the, i mean everything about it the service but um, it's also very casual, you so, know, it's not stuffy and we never want to be in that, you know, where yeah. it's stuffy, it's not stuffy, <laughs> right. And it's very casual and that's what I think people like that too. I mean, you don't have to get dressed up. You don't have to, you know, you're, you're out and you're out doing exploration sometimes twice a day and, you know, you're tired and you can relax. You, can wear you, know, you don't feel you like know. putting on a ball gown for dinner. Yes. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. We know we have clients who, who still love that that yeah. kind of experience. And, and that's why there's something for everybody. And, and uh, I, I would say that, that probably three quarters of our clients today really love the, the casual approach where you we, where you don't have to worry about dragging along evening wear and, and uh, uh, right. about being presentable on on. Uh, you, you know, their, their, uh, dress up nights that, you know, they, they, people yep. these days are, are just very, they like the country club casual is yep. as dressy as most of them want to be. What about the food? Well, I, I do want to kind of back up a little bit because okay. I, I think I want to make sure that everyone understands how inclusive our experience is as well. So when you see, uh, if you were going to our website or shopping any of our products at all, there's a price there and that's your price. That's everything. There's no additional taxes or fees or, or anything else in there. That's the full price per person. Double okay. In the cabin. No taxes. And, and for the, no, no. I mean, it's all, it's right there. That's the price that you make. And in that price for every single voyage, we provide a pre hotel night in a four or five star hotel. So basically if you see nine nights, it's really 10 because you have that hotel night too. And you know, when we also provide transfers. So, you know, you will submit to us what your airline, your travel information is. We will pick you up at the airport, bring you to the hotel. I mean, so you're pretty much taken care of from that moment that you land in, in the airport. We take you to the hotel. Uh, we have a hospitality desk there. And then the next morning we'll do breakfast and then we transport you to the ship. Now, some of these destinations, because they're remote, it includes a charter flight. You know, so for example, many of our Antarctica sailings start from Ushuaia, but the hotel night is in Buenos Aires. And then we take you and we transport you. We take you on our uh, chartered flight down to Ushuaia and then you get on the ship. So on board, everything is included your shore excursions your expeditions your gratuities um your drinks all your drinks i mean you can spend money and buy you know a bottle of dom perignon or something like that but you know for the most part all of your drinks coffee espresso wine 
uh, liquor, all of that's included, all your gratuities, like I said, all of the food on board. So we had a chef who, who came from, our head chef came from many other luxury lines, experience in the Sea Dream and Silver Sea, I believe, I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, he, he really is uh, bringing that cuisine on board that we're going to have, you know, the five-star cuisine as well. But we're also in the ports where we can, we're really going to do some local flavors as well, which, you know, isn't too much in, in Antarctica per se, but when we're in South America, we'll have some South American inspired dishes and in Africa and everything else. But that being said, we also can handle any dietary restriction that someone has. I mean, and some of these voyages are long. So whether it's, you know, gluten free or vegan or sugar, -free, you know, whatever it is that we can, you know, uh, accommodate that on board. And the other thing that we offer is, you know, because all of our dining is included on board and we have our main swan restaurant, which would seat everyone. But if someone doesn't want to go into the dining room, you know, they're just exhausted. You know, we have this club lounge, which serves all types of food 24 hours a day, drinks, food. We always have um, during the day that the pool bar and grill, and then also 24 hour room service. So, you know, uh, I think it's something for everyone. And, and we also do have for those who want to stay active too, we do have a gym and spa on board. But that's really it, you know, and I think it's important to, to manage customers' expect expectations because just like you said, some people like to dress up, some people like to have, you know, a casino and entertainment and everything, and we don't have that. I mean, our entertainment is the beautiful scenery, um, our, the guest lectures, you know, it's interacting with the other guests. And yes, we do have a lounge where we'll have a piano player and light music and things like that. But it's definitely not for those who are always looking for that excitement. The production show and casino is yes, not. None, is, none of that. And, and, you know, uh, the, and, and, you know, folks, you can have both. And maybe you want a vacation with all of the, the uh, uh, big ship amenities. But uh Next time around, you're looking for a Swan Hellenic yep. type of approach where, where you're on an intimate ship exploring more distant destinations. And uh, I, I love, I love, look, before we move on, I love your inclusive model because our clients these days, they, they prefer to just pay what they're going to pay and get on board and not have a, a huge wow uh yeah bar bill at the end of their experience i i so i love i, I salute you yeah. for having the oh, thank you. So the, the uh gratuities everything is it's once you get on board it is pretty much everything taken care of so i love that yeah uh, i would love to just delve into a few of your prime destinations because not everybody certainly takes clients to the arctic and the antarctic um you you have a uh, an eight day itinerary to the Arctic that I think is I, I mean the Antarctic is, is more popular. You have a lot more cruise lines doing that one, but the Arctic is really uh, it, it's kind of off the grid for most everybody else. Um, you you have a couple of dates in June for for this. I don't. Do, do you have space available for any of these? We actually do. We do have space available. Um, you know, I think one of the things that kind of with um, starting up a cruise line or with the pandemic has been an interesting challenge. So <laughs> we've kind of you know held back on the marketing and and you know everything else until we're kind of seeing our way to the other side. So that's good for everyone because we do have some space still available in the summer That's of 22. Fun. But um, very, I mean, this is, uh, again, so this is seven nights on the ship, but actually where this starts. So we actually, you would fly to Oslo, and then that's where we your journey would begin. That's where the hotel night would be. And then we would fly you again on a flight to Longyearbyen, which is, you know, it's actually the northernmost town in the world. So that's, that's kind of interesting. And then where are you going around? Again, it's very much, I mean, this is where you're going to see uh, polar bears and uh, glaciers, icebergs, you know, hopefully the Arctic fox, 
uh, walruses. I mean, this is all about the wildlife and the wow. scenery. I, I mean, love and that. it's in the summer. You know, you're also you have to remember that you're daylight almost all all the entire day. You know, there's very little darkness, if any. So um, you really get the advantage that you can really be, you know, even if you're on the ship, kind of viewing the wildlife all the time. Yeah, you you probably uh, uh, find that you need. At least it's been true for me when I'm in those those extended daylights. I find that my body just seems to require a lot less sleep when when the yep. when it, you don't have so those all those hours of darkness. Right. Right. This this looks fabulous out there, just up there, right up close and personal. Uh, yeah, this is, the Arctic is is um, yeah a very special destination. And you mentioned the Arctic. That's why you have the Arctic fox. Yes, <laughs> that, that little fellow. I just had to include that that image. <laughs> that was so all just amazing and cool. So. That is definitely an off the beaten path, unusual. Sure. Sure. If you've been everywhere else, Swan Hellenic can take you to the Arctic Circle and and give you th this incredible experience that that uh, probably you won't run into a lot of people. Who well, have been you know there. what's also uh, you know great too is even for those people who are not cruisers who like don't you know there are places you really can only get to on a ship. You know, or or be the easiest way. You know, the Arctic, the Russian Far East, Antarctica. And, you know, I think this really provides even for like kind of the non-cruisers who don't want to be with too many people because we're only 152 passengers, and we also have an amazing like uh, space ratio on the ship. So I mean, you're not going to feel crowded at any time by any means. Yeah. It's a totally different experience when you get off on one of these small ships. It's a totally different ambiance and uh, yep. just you know it's like uh apples and watermelons when you're talking you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the same as a lot so if you think you don't like cruising you might well really love right. small ship cruising uh like swan hellenic offers the other destination that that i think is you know so popular right now is, is the uh antarctica and I thought this was an amazing 19 days. Uh, and I like your exploration and self-discovery. <laughs> so, I mean, um, this one actually, instead of starting in Ushuaia, actually starts in Buenos Aires. So, you know, you're going to go, you're going to sail from Buenos Aires. You're also going to go to Puerto Madryn in the uh, Patagonia, which is amazing, in Argentina. You're going to go to the Falkland Islands, and then you're going to make your way down to Antarctica, go to Elephant Island, um, I mean, and get the full Antarctica experience as well. So, yeah, it, it, it's very special. And I know there's, um, you know, we talk about there's a lot of ships going to Antarctica, but a lot of them are very small. But I do want to tell you, and this is really important, if somebody's thinking about going to Antarctica, because let's face it, that's usually like a once in a lifetime bucket list trip. If you are on a ship with more than 200 passengers, you will only be able to do one shore landing a day. So if you're going to make the investment to go to Antarctica, you need to be on a ship with less than 200 passengers because what happens is in Antarctica, you um, cannot have more than 100 people on shore at any time. So because we're less than 200 passengers, you know, we will, be, everyone will be able to do two shore landings a day, which is very important. Uh, in addition, the larger ships cannot get into these bays if they're not polar class rated. So I really recommend I recommend Swan Atlantic, but if you're going to go, I would definitely recommend going on a small ship to Antarctica. Absolutely. They're, they're just, uh, and, and you, you know, with, with the large ships, and there again, some people, uh, for whatever reason, uh, prefer the, the large ship experience, and they're content to, to be less active. They just, you know, uh, less involved, less hands-on. Um, so, but, but uh, if you absolutely laurie if you want to be uh 
have your feet on the ground and and, and be out there exploring, uh, seeing the, the incredible wildlife. Um, you, you do need to be on one of the small vessels. And I mean, the other thing is, you know, Antarctica, you know, we don't know how long Antarctica, I mean, with ice melting, you know, what it's going to look like. I mean, and, you know, one of the other things that we really take seriously, too, is sustainability. So, you know, like where we're not dropping an anchor there and we really, you know, I'm not saying the other uh, operators don't, but I mean, we really take care to make sure that, you know, we're leaving it the way that we found it that and that that is so important now we the cruise lines and i know the cruise industry as a whole is very very committed to uh, maintenance and 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 keeping our ecology healthy and and uh, because uh uh just it's the right thing to do for one thing but but otherwise right. it's also uh you know the existence of the entire cruise industry uh, depends on on maintaining uh, the the oceans and the wildlife, uh, or, or they will cease to exist. Uh, right. So, so uh, I am I'm always glad to hear the uh, like you guys have have the are committed to that uh, to maintaining uh, proper procedures and so forth to make. Uh, Antarctica available and and help it exist for for generations to come for uh, those behind us to enjoy as well. Uh, the other destination, Lori, that I wanted to touch on is very popular these days. A few, just probably the last six years or so, people have really discovered Iceland, and it has become a very popular destination oh you know Lori, but i didn't i want to take a minute i want to go back uh and just backtrack i wanted to play this 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 video clip of your antarctica I, i'll be doing okay. uh our our audience a disservice I'm ready to pack my bags. <laughs> I tell you that just boy, talk about inspiration. That's a great video. <laughs> but I, I'm sorry, folks. I just I just wanted to play that. I got ahead of myself here and was going on to Iceland, and it wasn't time yet because you. I just really wanted to include that. So back to Iceland here. Now we'll move on. Uh, this is an incredible eight nights, and it takes you all the way around. I think this is the best way to see Iceland, in my opinion, is by cruise ship. So I actually, this past summer, 
my husband and I, we had a, uh, we decided last minute to go to Iceland, uh, you know, amidst travel restrictions and everything else. And we're like, we're going to go, we're going to rent a car, we're going to drive around. And it was spectacular. It was incredible. But we did not get to go all the way up in, in the Northeast. We just didn't have the time or, you know, we just couldn't make it all the way up there. It was spectacular, but we drove every day, like three to four. It was exhausting. Um, it was expensive. Um, there were very few places to stay, everything, gas. Uh, so, yes, I, I think Iceland's incredible. Everyone should go. This is the way to go on a ship because I, mean, I would have loved to have been able to, at the end of the day, go back to my cabin. We, I mean, we had to pack and unpack every single night. You know, yes. to see it. So the convenience, yeah, lesson the learned. <laughs> the convenience just is unsurpassed when you do do these trips by cruise ship, and also you know it's the convenience and the all inclusive. You know what you're right. paying. You're and, right. and you're not out there in the middle of, of uh, somewhere and you know that you're not familiar with trying to figure out. Uh, you know, something happens and maybe your hotel reservation got lost and there you are. So you're on the ship. You've got your your stateroom. You are good to go. And, and it, it's just wonderful. And but Iceland I, is amazing. And I have to tell you, so many people just go to, you know, fly into Reykjavik and do three days and, and uh, you know, on the south coast, which is beautiful. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. But up north and Lake Mitvin and Iceland Fjord ah, it was spectacular. Spectacular. I mean, I would go back again. It was, I mean, the waterfalls, the scenery. I mean, we went from, you know, being in a desert to, I mean, the greenest grass you could imagine to being in fjords and seeing icebergs. I mean, it was very, very spectacular. And people are very friendly and everyone speaks English and, you know, it's a nice getaway for sure. And I think that makes it for, uh, also adds to to the attraction for people. It, it's a destination uh, where, where you can get a, off the beaten track and people still understand what you know. Yes. When you ask for, <laughs> You're looking for the bathroom. They know what you're talking about. <laughs> Ladies' room, please. Uh, oh, that's, that's good. Now, you, you guys go to some some less uh, remote destinations too. I just picked out this one in Scotland. It's been a very popular destination for us. Sure, sure. And uh, this one actually, we we leave from Dublin, and it's actually interesting because we go, you know, where you can really explore Northern Ireland, which is. I mean, it's still a little off the beaten path. And then you go around and you end up in Leith in Scotland. So it's, um, you know, I would say doing the the passage on the north of these islands um, is a little different for sure. And then again, because we're 152 passengers, we can get into these small ports that a lot of and, and, and a lot of people have been have been to Ireland, but they focused on the southern part, you know, down yes. in there. That's the typical uh itinerary for people. You you know, start in Dublin and you Dublin and you do the the loop and and uh uh you, you know the cliffs of more and you you know you see all of those those things that are down south. Uh and and Northern Ireland and up into Scotland a little less popular yeah. with the, and so if you've been to Ireland, but you've only done that, that Southern part, uh, you need to go again. And yes, definitely. One <laughs> Hellenic would be a great uh, choice for that. Uh, how about, how are you guys doing with the COVID crisis? How, what, what are your so, I'll tell you the, I mean, so again, for us, we like, we had to change our entire first year deployment. We had people booked because we were originally doing uh, New Zealand in depth, which was, it was a 30 night cruise, but it was super popular. But then we had to change it all. Now we're doing South America. So, I mean, it's been affecting us, um, our ship, you know, Argentina up until October, we didn't even know if it would operate the, Antar the Antarctica season. So, I mean, we've definitely had challenges along the way, COVID in the shipyard, delayed our ship. Anyway, on board, 100% vaccinated. Um, no, I mean, the crew, guests have to be, that's it. Uh, we test again. So obviously, you know, you're flying to say, you know, Argentina, you have to do whatever protocol they require to get into the country but then we also do another antigen test before you board the ship 
another one at some point during the voyage. And then if the, you know if something happens and if the doctor or the, the ship captain feels like it, I mean, we have all the testing on board. We have a ventilator on board. Uh, we have a doctor and nurse on board. And then also you'll be tested again once you disembark the ship, but no exceptions, 100% vaccinations. Okay, everyone. and that that is that is pretty much the rule of thumb for most of the yep. cruise lines these days, uh, and, and it, it's for the protection of everyone. Um, right. So, so if you basically for anyone who plans to do any kind of extensive travel, you uh, you just uh, you're, I mean, just uh, really going to pave the way if you are vaccinated yep. because so many more doors are open, even to go to the theater in New York city, you, you yep. have, you, you, you have to show your vaccination card. So, uh, j just, it, it opens the doors folks. That's just what I'm saying. Uh, so, uh, anything important that we haven't covered, Lori? I think we, we've covered quite a bit. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, the ship, the protocols. Um, no, we have, like I said, we have once our third, so we have one ship coming now and then two ships next year. And, you know, we'll be sailing all over the world. So we really do offer something for everyone. And what we've also seen some, a lot of interest is people who they want to extend their voyages and they're doing because of the, the nature of the voyages, like they're going, you know, they don't repeat a lot of them. Mm -hmm. People are, you know, booking two or three back to back in a row, and we offer, you know, a significant discount for those types of bookings. So that is great. Book seven, seven back to back cruises. I was like, wow, wow. They book their own world cruise. That sounds like a world <laughs> cruise, absolutely. But but really, you know, you, if you're flying anyway, you yeah. make the most of that airfare, folks, and, and just do a sure. back to back or a couple of them. Um, and and uh, do you have any special promotions or offers that we should share? Yes, it's actually the timing is perfect because we uh, we do have our like standard twenty percent off for shore fares. That's our early booking savings. That that's available on all the sailings. But we actually are launching on Monday, so you're hearing it for the first. <laughs> this so, uh, um, promotion it's for six sailings leaving in South America. So this this one gone from. Uh, Ushuaia up to Valparaiso, uh, then up to Lima, and it kind of the ship makes its way all the way up to San Diego. So there's quite a few interesting itineraries in Central America, Panama City, Guatemala, um, and we are launching. It's uh, the second passenger is half off, and that's half off of our early booking savings. So I mean, it's really like a 45 percent discount on those six sailings, and then we're also um, you know, we offer for back to back an additional 10% savings. And what I wanted to tell you, I wanted to do for you, for anyone that you get to book, say by the end of December, I'll extend our past guest savings for all of your bookings, which is, oh, an, additional, wow. so, which is an additional 5%. And that's only if they're booking through you. All so, right. Well, thank you, Lori. Okay. Great and we're Which going is to significant, you know, when you talk about the price points, it is a significant savings. So that's I will, cool. I can send you uh, the, the official promotion for South America if you'd like. But That would be wonderful. So folks, if, if you're interested in this, uh, just reach out to me. It's, uh, it's very easy to get me and, and, uh, you could just, uh, for, for information, you could give me a call or email me using go across the screen now. Uh, and I'll make sure that you get that link showing their promotions for right now. And we will sweeten the deal. We are going to offer uh, uh, a DMT tote bag uh, and packing cubes to anybody who books Swan Hellenic during the month of December. So by December 31st, take advantage of their promotions and get a little something extra as well. And speaking of packing cubes tonight, I'm uh, uh, going to give away something, but not packing cubes. I uh, We are going to give away a pair of great binoculars. Uh, and these would be fabulous for your trip with Swan Hellenic. You would not miss a single thing. Uh, and so now is the time. If you're watching live, live listeners only, enter the word swan in the comment section and I'll enter you in our drawing for some 
fabulous binoculars. And Lori, thank you so much for, for being yeah. with us. I, I, I am just so impressed by everything I've learned about, about Swan Hellenic and, and your product is absolutely fabulous on so many different levels. I know you've given our audience a lot to think about. Folks, I hope your time has been well spent with us this evening. We always want to inspire and encourage you. And uh, if you're an adventure traveler and appreciate cultural exploration incorporated into your adventures, uh, Swan Hellenic is a perfect fit for you. So thank you again, Lori, and so appreciate your being with us. And thank folks, we, we will uh, see you again next week at Let's Talk Travel. Bye now. Thank you.